Hello, Professor Paulo. Usually I start asking what are you going to talk about today, but today I'm going to start asking what are you wearing? Sure. This is a Microsoft HoloLens 2, and you're wearing one too. I am. It's, uh, it's an augmented reality headset. It's a, basically a self-contained computer on one's head. Uh, it's made by Microsoft, and they call it a mixed reality headset, which is oh. to say that it's a computer that is scanning yeah. space and, and presenting holograms to the person who wears it. OK, so let's start just uh, explaining one thing. What is the difference? Because we hear a lot about VR. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between VR and AR? Sure. So virtual reality takes over your whole vision and immerses you completely from a visual perspective and to some extent audio perspective as well. It immerses you completely in a artificial world, in a 3D environment uh, that is all around you. So you can, of course, turn your head and, and look at and interact with certain things. So VR essentially uh, is, is a fully visually immersive thing. Augmented reality or mixed reality, uh, depending upon who exactly you ask these days, means that you also see the real world, the real normal world that we're used to. You just see things on top of it. You see augmentations of it. Uh, so those might be anything from objects that are not actually present in the real world to labels and pop-up windows and things like that that are visually presented on the world. Now, those, those objects depending upon exactly what kind of augmented reality we're talking about, those objects are mapped spatially to the real world. Mm -hmm. So we can put something in the room that isn't actually there, but it will stay there, at least from the XYZ coordinate perspective, as we walk around it or to it or away from it or what have you. So you can put artificial holographic three-dimensional objects that you can walk around and interact with in what is otherwise a real space. OK, so if I turn my head, I can see Earth. Yes, yes, Earth and a little moon over here. And of so, course, today we also have Roll here, which is recording a third camera for us. Yep. So there's three of us. Each of us is wearing a HoloLens. And we are experiencing the same shared space uh, we're co-located, as in we are physically present in the same room, but we are also sharing this, uh, these sets of augmentations, these artificial objects that are in the room. There's a little table for us to use as a, just as a common reference point, though we don't have to use the table, but all of us can see and interact with the two objects that are presently in the room, which is this model of a globe and this model of the moon. So you guys can see me moving it. And if you move yes. it, I will also see that too. OK, so let's try moving this. I could put it here, or I can put it here and hide it from you, perhaps. Yep, yep. you're hiding it because now it's behind the Earth. And Rule just brought it over into my field of view again. OK. And the interesting thing is that if I turn around it, I can actually see the 3D model from different perspectives as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we can also create annotations. For example, this is a drawing, just a squiggly line. But I might want to do something a little bit more meaningful, like this, relative to the moon mm -hmm. and the Earth. All right. All right, so it's like a three-dimensional whiteboard, essentially where we can uh, draw things for each other in, in space as opposed to on a flat surface. So we are now the three of us in the same room. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can imagine that if you're connected to the internet, that this could be three of us in different countries, for instance. Yep. Yeah, we, we are actually connected through the internet in order for us to share this experience, even though we're in the same room. But we don't have to be in the same room. You could be halfway around the world, and we could be sharing a uh, artificial space without actually being in the same room. Uh, so we could have essentially holographic uh, webcam conferences 
uh, where instead of seeing the actual you, I see an avatar version of mm -hmm. you. So, so there's still there's still some X Y Z coordinate computation going on for these things to decide where they are in relative space. Mm -hmm. Right now, because we're in the same room, it's using the actual locations. But if we were in separate rooms, like me across the world, then we would be placed into an artificial room, and and a, a ghost version of you mm -hmm. would be visible in this room for me to see. So all of this looks incredibly cool. Uh, what kind of application do you see for this, for in the in the GIS uh, domain? Yeah, my my work with this is is brand new, <laughs> and and uh, and I'm going to be exploring applications mainly around what the user experience and the visual communication is like with a three dimensional hologram like this, as opposed to screen or paper based cartography. Mm -hmm. So three-dimensional renderings and and cartography of thematic things generally and whether or not there are significant changes to to what's visible to mm -hmm. what's uh, to what's communicatable from a cartographic perspective in this way one of the first places uh, that I will be looking is in digital twinning Mm -hmm. So those are essentially highly detailed models, representations of something like a building or a city. Uh, and, and the idea behind a digital twin is that you can use it to simulate, calculate, monitor uh, a ongoing process through time. One of the obvious interaction modalities is to look at it, is to view it. Mm -hmm. So I'll be, I'll be experimenting with with making three-dimensional digital twins that uh, can be viewed in, in this immersive immersive environment as opposed to panning and zooming on a two-dimensional screen. I see. Is this something that could be used as well for, let's say, collaborative mapping? Yes. Is this something I, that we covered before in the channel? Yeah, I don't see why not. You know, we could always have, say, for example, a two-dimensional map and then make annotations over it. So right now we see this model of a globe, but there's mm -hmm. no reason that I can't bring in, say, an OBJ file mm -hmm. or, uh, or some other three-dimensional file that's more common in the video game 3D animation world. Bring that into this space and then use these annotation capabilities to, for example, collaboratively mark out uh, bits. You know, let's say, let's plan the, the fire fighting situation by establishing a camp here and uh, and placing resources there and this is where we plan to be by day three or what have you and, you know an experiment like that we can make annotations on this three-dimensional canvas also for teaching so at the visuse laboratory here at gip we have seven of these mm -hmm which is great because that means we can have up to seven people collaboratively experience a, an environment with 3D objects together. So I could have, say, six students along with me mm -hmm. and, uh, and perform a, a demonstration or a lecture or what have you on, on something that particularly benefits from three-dimensional rendering. Mm -hmm. And they'll all be here in an embodied, immersive immersive way to experience it and they can interact as well yeah pretty amazing and do, do you think that this is something that well let's say will be uh, common in the future like a smartphone or something like that I think so I I think uh, my personal guess is that this technology um, will become more prevalent once the cost falls uh, because right now this is not astronomically expensive, but it's a bit expensive to have a piece of equipment such as this. But I think when the cost falls and when it becomes more comfortable, mm -hmm. I mean, this is not terribly uncomfortable, but you still have to put a computer on your head. And once it becomes, say, as easy as a pair of glasses, then, uh, then the the barriers to usability uh once these barriers to usability and cost are 
lowered, then I think this technology will see a lot more use. So for now, for now, it's it's a bit of a you know early adopter niche type thing. But uh, but it's fun to know that a lot of this sort of holographic three dimensional projection stuff that we often see in the movies, right? This is very I've heard this described as very Iron Man. Yeah. Um, this exists as long as you have something on your head. Mm -hmm. and, and once once you don't need something on your head or once that thing is very light and easy to acquire, then then I do think we'll see more of this. Awesome. Well, thank yeah. you very much for this demonstration. Thank you. Do you yeah. want to be a geo hero as well? Then take the first step and click the subscribe button and then the bell button to always be the first to know when one of our geo heroes posts a new video.